Welcome back to Can We Fix It? Uh, this week's episode is going to be um, very sappy and uh, unlike me. <clears throat> but uh, I'm recording on what was supposed to be my last budget for the next couple of years. Um, instead, I woke up with a 99.1 degree fever uh, which pretty much much puts me out of the running for being eligible to show up in that room. Um, just so we're clear, any other time, if it doesn't break 100, it doesn't count. Um, when it comes to not killing my seatmates, um, I take it a little bit more seriously. So, I didn't get the opportunity to say goodbye to any of... The colleagues that I actually enjoyed working with um, and one thing that I definitely learned up at the State House is that <clears throat> while in our everyday lives it's very easy to not socialize or be friends with people in opposing parties and it makes sense right you know if you are you know a queer person and you have you know, a neighbor or family member or whatever who thinks that conversion therapy is okay. Like, I fully understand not wanting to socialize with that kind of person. Like, that, that is literally separating your dignity from yourself um, in order to carry on with that relationship. In the house, though, you don't have the option to cut people out the way that you do in real life. And, um... As such, you find ways to find common ground with people who, you know, from a larger lens may appear to have like really appalling views, but from a, a narrower lens, um, you know, are, are really good, kind people. So uh, it's a lot easier to get past the, the bipartisan nature uh when you're in that room and you're required to be um you know work as a team so um that being said mike chippendale of foster gloucester and blake Phillippe for black island uh are a couple of my favorite people up there uh they are genuinely nice and polite um they are hilarious uh, and I spent a lot of my time, um, during debates or, or, uh, various policy, uh, uh, conversations, you know, crouched beside their desks asking them the questions because I knew that they would give me honest answers. Um, I loved, uh, getting Blake Phillippe's point of view on things um he's very diplomatic he is very smart um but he's also just very real and would always you know tell it to me like it is um and uh so yeah and I and I do feel bad for both of them because anytime that one of their voters sees me comment on their Twitter or Facebook or whatever, they're like, you're friends with this psycho, blah, 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 liberal, nut job. And Mike Chippendale always goes like, hey, I'm her, I'm her friend. Of course I know that she's crazy, uh, which I love because it's absolutely true. Um, Chippy was also always the person that I would like find at events. You know what I mean? If I needed... You know, if we were in a big room with the whole, with the whole, uh, assembly, uh, I always wanted to, like, find Chippy, be like, okay, that's my, that's my rock. If I, if he's here, like, I can get through the rest of this evening. Um, I also want to, so my, my seatmate was Edie Agello, and that was, I am very lucky to have had her, uh, as my guide these last four years, um, we agree on most things, um, but those that we didn't agree on, uh, we always did so gracefully with each other. Um, and 
My favorite Edie story was the very first time that I said on the floor that I was going to vote no on a bill. Um, apparently, you're supposed to tell the speaker that you're going to vote no and why you're going to vote no. And then, like, get permission and then you vote no. Which, like, I'm not doing that, first of all. And second of all, like, that's not a written down rule, so I didn't even know that rule existed. So... And I remember what the vote was, and it was petty, and it was not, it just, if I could go back and do it again, I would probably vote differently, but it was my first year, and we were like three months in, and we had not voted on anything of importance, like at all. It was all just like resolutions, and birthdays, and like, congratulations to this one, and congratulations to that one, and it was just like deeply frustrating, because I thought that I was going up there to change the world. <laughs> Weird. Um, and the one of the first bills that we actually got to vote on was a bill that made it um, less hours to become a hairdresser and or cosmetologist, which first of all, those are two very different things, just so we're clear. Um, and second of all, there were five sponsors on the bill. All of them were men. And the top sponsor of the bill was a bald man. And I just fucking snapped. I snapped, like I, I was like out of my body. <laughs> And I like got on the mic and I was like, there's a difference between hairdressers and cosmetologists and saying that you're going to, and I, whatever, I gave whatever reason that I felt was legitimate enough. Um, but in honesty, I really just like tweaked out that like after months of not doing anything, the first thing we were going to vote on was like this meaningless hairdresser bill sponsored by a bald man. Like I just, I couldn't. So I finish my speech and I sit down and Edie looks at me and says, did you just say that you were going to vote no on this? And I said, yeah, why? She said, I don't know the reason. But she got up and she walked over and walked behind over to the dais and she said something to the uh, legal counsel who then, you know, repeated it to the speaker. She went and came back to her seat and when the vote came, I voted no, and Edie voted no beside me. And I found out later it was just because she didn't want me to vote no alone. She went up and said, hey, I don't think she has 100% thought this through and doesn't super know um, how the thing, how the rules work around here, um, and I don't want her to be all by herself. Oh, I'm getting a little verklempt. It's a very good thing that I didn't, uh, that I couldn't go to session today um, because I probably would have cried like a weenie. Um, then we have Marcia Wranglin Vassal. She and I were both elected uh, at the same time and we both had um, campaign managers who worked very, very closely together and um, became fast friends. You know, I just love her spunk. I love her tenacity. I love her, uh, her honesty and her genuineness and her, I mean, everything about her. Um, but we sat on multiple committees together. We were on HEW together. Uh, and then later when we got in trouble and kicked off our committees, we got sent to, uh, environment committee together. And, uh, I mean, we would, first of all, we were the nerds of the class, right? That would like read all the things that we were given and like circle what we were going to ask questions about. And we would text each other, you know, are you going to ask about this? And, oh, I'm on it. And like, it made the work feel, um, more meaningful, uh, especially in that room where you know that you don't have a say in anything and you know that you don't have any, um, like, sway on anything, um, to be able to, like, work together and 
at least do your best, even knowing um, that it was going to get chucked in the trash can. <laughs> um, after my first two years, I, uh, I remember I was drafting my next set of legislation for my second term. And when the first drafts came back, I didn't quite like them. Um, and I sent them back to be reworked. And I kept thinking to myself, like, nobody's going to read it. It's not going to go anywhere. It's immediately going to get thrown into the held for further study trash can. Like, there's no world in which, after my behavior these last two years, I'm going to get anything passed. Um, and I still couldn't bring myself to give you know, my B plus game. Like I, it had to be drafted well. It had to be right. It had to be perfect to my standards. Um, and that was something that Marcia and I uh, always had in common is that even when we knew that our bill was going to get, you know, destroyed or, or you know, lost, um, we would always put our best effort into it. Um, then we have, uh, so one of the other things about the state house that's fun is that like you get to build relationships with people that there's like no other world in which you guys would meet or be friends. Um, and so representative John Lombardi is like my dude. Um, and in, in what other scenario would me a 30 year old waitress be friends with a 70 year old judge uh lawyer councilman mayor and now representative um but he is delightful he is absolutely delightful and i remember um one of the protests that i went to earlier this year uh seemed like it was going to get a little dicey with the police and I called John Lombardi and I said, hey, do you mind if I um, just like have your number on speed dial and have you be my one call on the off chance that I get arrested this evening? And John was like, you know, I always knew that at some point this call was going to come and you were going to ask me this. Um, and yes, of course, if you ever need uh, anything, you give me a call. And so I like wrote his number on my arm. Um, that protest did get very dicey, by the way. Um, I went there with my roommate um, and brought all the things that as an organizer, I wished people would bring to my protests, right? So um, I brought extra masks for people. Uh, I brought popsicles for the little kids. I brought water. I brought Gatorade. I brought med kits. Um, I brought, um, you know, uh, uh, anything that, you know, would be useful uh, to, to large crowds of people in the heat. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, those are all people in my community and I'm proud of them for standing up for what they believe in. And I want to be able to be there and, you know, take care of them if I need to. Um, and that was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen in a protest where they first deliberately told us, Hey, you guys can stay outside till curfew. And then, um, like five minutes later, they like all whipped out their batons and they were like, no, you got to clear out now. Um, so, I mean, it was good to have a, a backup plan for that particular scenario. Um, we also, uh, I also became very good friends with Representative Joe Almeida, which again, in what world would I um, ever be, like meet him, let alone be buddies with him? Um, and the thing that he and I have in common is that at our core, we are city kids. And there's only so much you can stuff your city kid down before it starts to like bubble up and like pour out your ears. So, um, there was one day that Joe was, 
I knew him well enough that there was a debate that was going on and I heard a phrase that I knew was gonna set Joe off. And so I immediately turned around and made eye contact with him and I was like, hey, hmm, like with my eyes, just like, we got this, you know, just ooh, saw, just like, let it roll, buddy, let it roll. And and he, I saw him like, okay, and he like calmed down. And you know, same debate, somebody else says something a little offensive. I'm pretty sure it was, um, the bill had something to do with, uh, God, let me think. Oh, 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 it was when we were, <laughs> we were trying to pass a bill that was like figuring out why we don't have enough teachers of color and hiring more teachers of color. And some ignorant fools were like, well, how come white people aren't included? And even though it was like repeatedly explained to them that like, because we have plenty of white teachers and that's not the problem, the problem is that we can't seem to be cultivating and hiring teachers of color. So why would we do a study on why we don't have enough white teachers when we have enough motherfucking white teachers? Do you know what I'm saying? So like the longer the debate is going on, the more Joe Almeida's blood is just like boiling. And I keep like making eye contact and like, t and by like the fourth or fifth comment, he just like slammed his desk shut and stood up and started, you know, doing his Joe Almeida. Um, but, but he had waited so long before his city kid finally like <laughs> came out and like, you know, went in. Um, and when he did it for me was, uh, <laughs> there was a day, it was right after Kristen's law passed. And um, the thing that really pissed me off about Kristen's law is I kept asking people how they were voting on it. And if you're voting, yes on a shitty bill that's fine just tell me that you're voting yes on a shitty bill don't fucking lie to me and tell me that you're gonna vote no and then vote yes anyway because that's a little bitch move so the day after the vote i was coming face to face with a lot of people who had said that they were going to be voting with me and then did not vote with me which like fine do your thing like do your thing it's not i only get the one vote if i didn't convince you that's my problem not yours but then they kept coming up to me and like putting a hand on my shoulder and being like, you did a really good job yesterday. Mm, mm, no, I don't like that. No, I don't like that. You did a really good job yesterday and like, sorry it didn't work. By the third person, I was like, hi, I actually asked you for your no vote, um, not your fucking pity. So if you're not going to give me your no vote, anything less is just like offensive and I don't need it. I don't need it. Um, so a Republican representative who, uh, uh, Mendonca, like he's not there anymore. So who cares? Um, he was replaced by Terry Corfriend, who was like by far the, uh, superior candidate. Um, he comes up and he thinks he's being funny. Right. And he's like, Oh, I really thought that we were going to have to uh, put you on suicide watch after yesterday's vote. It was like, meh, 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 mental health jokes are so funny. Meh, 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 meh. And I said, no, no. I wasn't in danger of hurting myself. I was in danger of hurting one of you. Because all of this, like, petty, ridiculous conversation, um, is, is is meaningless to me when you lied to my face. You said you were gonna vote no on this bill and then you chickened out and you voted yes. Um, so, so you lied. And so I don't really actually care about any of the stuff on top of that. Um, the other person that I really am going to miss is uh, for the last two years, I sat in front of Kathy Fogarty and she and I had more fun than we probably should have during session. Um, we were like uh, thick as thieves, always. Um, she would like whisper things into the back of my head and I would like try not to giggle and just, I mean, it almost felt like high school again, you know, when you like get to be in class with your friends. Um, and uh, 
and Liana. Liana Kassar. She's also a favorite of mine. Um, she just cuts right to the heart of issues and like understands um, human empathy and human needs in a way that cannot be said for all of the people in that room. Um, and, you know, I talk a lot of shit, but I should give credit where it's due. Joe Shikarchi was, was always really nice to me. And my very first Christmas party, I felt very uncomfortable. Um, I had just been elected. I had not yet been sworn in. Um, I was a waitress. Uh, and I, I said to Shikarchi, like, I very much feel as though I'm supposed to be on the other side of this interaction. Like, I'm being asked what I need by people dressed in a way that I should be dressed because I should be the one serving the drinks at this party. Um, and I mean, it was like a very politician-y answer, but he was like, well, that's the great thing about America is that everybody can represent, you know, their own communities. And like, you deserve to be here just as much as, you know, the person who showed up here in a BMW. Um, and uh, yeah, it was always just like really polite and welcoming and like apologetic when the speaker was being a dick and I like, know oh, it's not easy to deal with him, but let's move it forward. Um, and you know, had I been able to go in for the budget today, I would have absolutely voted yes on it. Um, because it was the first time that they didn't take from the have nots. And I don't know if that was Shikarchi or if that was just the, once again, tireless work of activists who demanded that there not be cuts to cities and towns, who demanded that there not be Medicare and Medicaid cuts um, in the middle of a fucking pandemic. Um, but I also, it gives me a lot of hope for the future that, you know, even if their instincts are bad or like their first draft is bad, that they'll listen that they'll, like, listen to the people of Rhode Island when they give their input? Like a, like a democracy? It's weird, guys. I, I mean, I'm not gonna get ahead of myself and think that, like, one budget that doesn't fucking suck ass, uh, means that the whole system has changed, but it feels different. And I feel like... I'm leaving everything in good hands. Um, and of course I'll be back. Um, and I'm bummed out that I didn't get to say my goodbyes. I had so many, um, I had so many fun things to tell you guys, uh, and, and goodbyes to say. And once again, coronavirus takes and takes and takes. Um, but it's a new day. I am a former representative and, um, I'm glad that they passed a budget that's actually going to help people and not just blindly pour money into the pockets of chiropractors and corporate welfare and things feel like they're looking up for a change in that room. We'll see. We'll see. I remain the right to reserve judgment. Um, as for the warbling that you hear in the background, this is what happens when I tell my son that he has to be quiet while mommy's recording. That's about as quiet as it gets, uh, in this building. Um, we are going to be off next week for Christmas. Uh, but the following week when we come back, it is our end of the year recap with Jason and I, where we talk about all the funnest things that happened this year, both in Rhode Island and national politics. Maybe we'll just stick to Rhode Island. I kind of want to not talk about Trump ever again. We'll see. I haven't decided yet. Depends on how drunk we get. Um, stay safe. Wash your hands. I am starting my quarantine today uh, in order to uh, hopefully make sure that um, I get myself tested in the next couple of days. And, um, you know, maybe I can at least 
drop some food off to the parents on on Christmas if not see them uh, face to face so stay safe wash your hands go be good neighbors and uh, tune in again <laughs>